The National Wildlife Refuge System is the world's premier system of public lands and waters set aside to conserve America's fish, wildlife, and plants. In the southeast alone, there are 128 protected wildlife refuges. The Okefenokee Swamp is one of these special places. But things were not always so. Swampers, as they were called, were people who settled and made their homes in and around the edges of the swamp. William T. Chesser killed a man, or a surveyor, over some land dealings. And he didn't wait around for any investigation. He just ran. He, there was a brother down here already, and he came and joined him. I don't know how he found out he was cleared of charges, but he went back and got his family because he just liked the area so much. And that's when they came here in 1858. In the late 1800s, W.T. Chesser and his family settled a small island on the eastern edge of the Okefenokee. Tom and Ida Chesser are the ones that built this particular house. This is a five bedroom house. It's a big house um, for that time era. But all the lumber was sawed here on the island. Uncle Tom brought a sawmill out here and they cut the trees, sawed them, and he paid a man two dollars a day to help him build the house. While exploring the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge, visitors can experience how these people lived by touring the Chesser Island homestead. The only thing they bought from town when they went to town, which wasn't but two or three times a year, was their, their gunpowder for their, um, their gun, and sugar, and salt, and flour. And, that, and then the material in the flour sacks is what they made a lot of their clothes with. They were self-sufficient people but they kept the yards clean like this on account of fires, snakes, and insects. And back then, if you had grass in your yard, you were considered lazy white people. They did have a few rose bushes around. Um, there, and there, there was a garden. That was their main thing. That's what they tended to more than anything because they raised their own food. They um, had cows, chickens, hogs, so they had their milk, they had eggs. Um, the garden stuff, they had peas, butter beans, corn, tomatoes, uh, sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes. I mean, they, they eat quite well. All these pine trees back here behind us, that was a um, field back then. And they planted these pines, I believe, in 58. But that was all field, and that's where they had their, their garden. They also had um, about a half an acre of peaches. Another cash crop was um, the turpentine from the pine trees. And then they also um, done cane syrup. They grew a lot of cane. They did have other contact, the church. They would go to Sardis Primitive Baptist Church. We call them hard shell. And that was once a month. And they would go from um, here and they'd leave on Saturday morning and they'd go stay with some relatives that night and they would have church Saturday kind of a meeting more or less, and then Sunday would be the main preaching. A lot of us volunteer, you know, we come out for the festival and we'll cook on the wood stove and because uh, we serve a sample of bacon, ham, and sausage and biscuits. We make uh, fry sweet taters and um, just try to give you a sample of what they eat back in their day. Um, make an old pumpkin pie and serve a little bit of that. and. Um, we sing four note quite a lot. We always sing that at the festival.